baggage is our insecurities from the past that we carry with us. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you mine. Okay. okay, when I was a young engineer, I had to do an internship in order to get my engineering degree. It was me and another young lady, and I will never forget, at the exit interview, my boss, you know, gave her interview, and she was always dressed to the nines because she had money, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. Me, I'm, um, you know, broke Lonnie, but I was doing my thing. Mm -hmm. And at the exit interview, I will never forget, he told me, he said, you know what, you are excellent, you're going to go all the way, but I just want to give you one suggestion. You should dress like her. <gasps> she dresses so nice and she dresses professional. And I looked at him because I'm like, I didn't have the money to dress right. anyway. Well, I've always carried that baggage with me. And I'm always particular about how I dress. So when I came to this show and I see oh. how you ladies dress, I get on our stylists and I have to commend them. Because even though I'm a plus size person, they make sure I dress just as good as y'all. Yeah. They do. I was maybe about 16. I told my family that I wanted to become a television host. And I can't, I remember my aunt, I can't believe she said this to me. She said, oh, well then you probably should go get your eyes fixed pretty soon because you can heal and by the time you're 18 and you'll get more jobs. And I was like, what do you mean my eyes fixed? What, you, what does that mean? She said, look on TV. Do you see any Asian people or anybody with small oh, wow. eyes on TV? And I was like, my eyes are small? Like I never really thought about that, but it got in my head. And I did look on TV, mm -hmm. and everybody in every morning show, and everybody that was famous and pretty on the news were models and beautiful big eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's a very famous surgical procedure in Asia to just get a double lid where your eyes look really wide and big. Mm -hmm. So I thought about it, and it bothered me. Then I started thinking about other things. She, you know, I started thinking about my skin color is not as white as a lot of the women that I saw on TV, and I wasn't as tall, and all these other things. And then I just, it got to me so bad that I got angry at my aunt and I decided mm -hmm. I got to go make this on my own and prove that I didn't need any of those things yeah. to make it. Right. I've never actually told you guys this. Um, being a twin, people compare. And they compare a lot by default. It's not their fault. But sometimes, you know, they see two people and they either say, oh, she's the sexy one or she's the cute one. Well, I was known as the goofy, cute one. And uh, I used to read um, our fan mail all the time. And that's what I used to get all the time when I was 16 years old. And I kept it. Are y'all crying out too? <laughs> Jesus. Yes, I can't. OK, well, I kept it. So going to college, I carried that. I was like, oh, the goofy, like, like cute one. I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the sexy one. And guys would literally go, oh, you're so goofy. You're so goofy. And I always thought it was a negative a term, you know, because all I wanted to be was sexy. Well, Only if I liked it. women, you would oh. be mine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I have a skin disease called vitiligo, and it's so crazy that nobody believes it. Really? Oh my God. And um, the reason why I won't work with a whole bunch of um, makeup artists yeah. is because I don't want other people to see. To know? And, oh. know about it. and so I used to sit on my hands because it's really bad on my hands. And it's so funny that people think I bleach my skin because bleaching won't take on my pigment. <laughs> it's so mm -hmm. crazy. And I tan to try to hide it. And so for me, I just decided, you know what, Tamara, you're going to accept yourself for who you are because either you're going to like me for me or you're not going to like me for me. For me, I have a lot of relationship baggage, like feeling like people um, either did me wrong or didn't want me. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I always validated myself with being um, successful or working. Mm -hmm. And then there was a period of time between Cheetah Girls and a lot of things that I've done now that I didn't work. Right. And I felt like men wouldn't want me because I wasn't where I was at oh, that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, um, I validated, like, people want to date me because I'm a cheetah You're girl, or yeah. you know, like I'm successful, and guys will want to date me because of that. Yeah. And then, like, when you find yourself at home and your man is getting up and going to work, and you don't have a job, and you're yeah. sitting there watching morning talk shows, and you're just like, why would somebody want to date me? Like, I'm like, you feel like you're not good worth. Enough. Like, what do I have going on for myself? That's something I always carry with myself.